Was D.B. Cooper Vince Peterson? Let's dig into a few things. All right, friends, let's get right into this, this discussion about D.B. Cooper and the prospect of Vince Peterson having been the real D.B. Cooper. So to begin with, right out of the gate, I want to let everybody know that I do not know whether Vince Peterson was D.B. Cooper. He is merely a personal person of interest, somebody who I believe that the evidence points to as possibly having been D.B. Cooper, which of course is a far cry from being able to prove that somebody was D.B. Cooper. Now, for those of you who have seen some of my earlier videos, you'll see or you'll recall that I've actually made uh, put forward quite a bit of evidence and I think made a pretty compelling case that suggests that D.B. Cooper came from a company called Remcrew Titanium, specifically that D.B. Cooper came from the Titanium Research Lab within Remcrew Titanium, and importantly, that Vince Peterson is the one person who actually worked at the Titanium Research Lab at Remcrew Titanium uh, that appears to check several of the boxes with respect to D.B. Cooper and D.B. Cooper's identity. Now, having said that, there are a few things that I want to address today or discuss today uh, with respect to D.B. Cooper, the evidence, and obviously specifically Vince Peterson as well. Now, first of all, it's important to note that Vince Peterson was six foot one inches tall. Now on the surface, at first blush, people may think, well, he couldn't be D.B. Cooper because he was simply too tall. After all, when you read the Wikipedia page about D.B. Cooper, it has, his, it has his height as being listed at between five foot 10 inches tall and six feet tall. Indeed, the official FBI description of Cooper lists him as be, being between five foot 10 inches tall and six feet tall. However, there is much more here than meets the eye. This is what I mean by that. Uh, there are really only four witnesses that I think are reliable, that are credible, that really have any merit as far as trying to peg or determine or ascertain what D.B. Cooper's actual height was. Those, of course, were the three flight attendants that actually had a chance to converse with D.B. Cooper and indeed actually stood next to D.B. Cooper, so they saw the guy standing. And the fourth person is a guy named Hal Williams, who was the gate agent at Portland, who observed D.B. Cooper quite closely. Uh, this, of course, was before the skyjacking because he happened to notice that Cooper was not only dressed in all black, which for whatever reason kind of attracted his attention, uh, but also he happened to be standing off uh, by himself on his own, whereby the other passengers seemed to kind of be collected together and chatting among themselves because their, their flight was somewhat delayed. Now, when you look at the testimony of these four people with respect to what D.B. Cooper's height was, this is how it broke down. Florence Schaffner, the very first person to speak with Cooper, uh, immediately goes to the uh, flight deck and you know brings the uh, the notes to to the captain and to the to the co-pilot and the uh, f flight engineer indicating that they've been hijacked and uh, at that point she's actually ordered to stay in in the in the, on the flight deck and and not go back to the into the cabin so you know, the first thing she does is she starts writing down some notes taking some hand notes and the first thing she does is she describes Cooper as being six foot one inches tall six foot one inches tall it's important to note now it is also important to note that you know several hours later when she actually interviewed with the fbi and gave her 302 she described db cooper as being six feet tall so she modified it down by one inch for whatever reason so six foot one inches tall initially then six feet tall several hours later when speaking with the fbi now tina mucklow who is the flight attendant who actually sat next to Cooper for several hours and conversed with him more than anybody, her initial 302 has D.B. Cooper as pegged between 5 foot 10 inches tall and 6 feet tall. Indeed, exactly what is listed in the official FBI description. However, a week later, when she gave a follow-up 302, after she had had more time to think about things and kind of mull over things and clarify some things and so forth, she updated her uh, height description for D.B. Cooper as six feet tall. So at that point, she said the guy was six feet tall. Important to note, I believe. 
Now, there's also the third flight attendant, a woman named Alice Hancock, who described D.B. Cooper and her 302 as being six foot one inches tall. And then, of course, there's the gate agent, Hal Williams, who I referenced earlier. In his 302, he described D.B. Cooper, he observed D.B. Cooper as being a guy who is six foot one inches tall plus. So you've got an awful lot of people here mentioning that D.B. Cooper appeared to be six foot one or perhaps six feet tall. Okay, why is it then that the official FBI description says five foot ten inches tall to six feet tall makes no reference of six, six foot one inches tall? Well, I think I have an explanation for it. And here we go. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you here is a very interesting letter that was written uh, by an agent, probably the special agent in charge, uh, from the FBI field office in Portland, Oregon. It was dated November 29th, 1971, so really four and a half days after the skyjacking, and he describes D.B. Cooper. Now, let me zoom in on something here. This is very interesting. You'll see that he describes D.B. Cooper as having been six foot one inches tall. So the first FBI description, again, coming from the Portland field office, has Cooper pegged at six foot one inches tall, which again is consistent with the witness testimony as I've just described to you. Now, when you consider why the official FBI description says, says five foot 10 inches tall to six feet tall, Here's what I think happened. It was the Seattle field office that actually took the lead on the case. And it's apparent to me that when Seattle field office, the default field office, released the official description of D.B. Cooper, again, it's the Seattle office, not the Portland office where that letter originated from, they obviously latched on to Tina's five foot ten to six feet tall description in her first 302 and ran with it and never modified that height, even though she had modified it. And additionally, they didn't broaden it to encapsulate the six foot one descriptions for some odd reason. I really have no idea why, but that is why I believe that. The official FBI description says five foot 10 to six feet tall. But having said that, I believe the actual correct description was the very first description, the one issued by the Portland field office, which again, to me, appears much more consistent with what the actual witnesses testified to, that D.B. Cooper was actually six foot one or perhaps six feet tall. So again, when you're looking at somebody like Vince Peterson, who's six foot one inches tall, you can see how he actually fits the height description perfectly. Of note, men of that age during that time, 1971, again, Vince Peterson was 52 years of age at this point, only 10% of American men were either six feet or six feet one. So it's an interesting thing to consider. Now, let me talk about uh, one other thing, which is kind of interesting here, which I think helps point to Rem Crew as well. Now, what you're seeing here is a picture, actually a couple pictures of a couple interesting particles. Now, the top picture is the famous uh, bird bath particle picture that's on Tom Kay's website, Citizen Sleuths. Now, you'll notice that in the center of that bird bath particle, there appears to be some crystals. Now, I believe that those crystals are titanium dioxide nanoparticles. And the picture that I have it on, the, on the bottom portion of the image here, you see is actually titanium dioxide nanoparticles. So I believe that is what we're looking at here. I think that is what Tom K actually photographed on D.B. Cooper's tie. Now, why this may be important is because titanium dioxide nanoparticles were used in a variety of ways, but interestingly, they were also used to calibrate instruments that were used in metallurgy. And of course, Vince Peterson worked as a metallurgist at the titanium research lab at Remcrew Titanium. So the more that I dig into the tie particles and the more that I get a better grasp of these particles and the significance 
uh, it does appear to me that we're on the right path with respect to identifying Remcru Titanium as the location that D.B. Cooper worked and specifically the Titanium Research Lab. And of course, this is completely setting aside the titanium and antimony particles that I've talked about in previous videos. So I think that's very compelling and I think that's yet another piece of evidence that does appear to suggest that D.B. Cooper did indeed come from Rem Crew Titanium. So finally, there's one other thing that I want to talk about here, and that relates to Vince Peterson and, hey, did the guy ever parachute before? Had he ever skydived in his life before? Or am I out there essentially asserting that this was his first jump ever? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, Mr. Peterson never skydived. So if Vince Peterson was D.B. Cooper, it does appear to suggest that this would have been D.B. Cooper's, or rather Vince Peterson's, first parachuting experience. Now, for those of you who have jumped, who have skydived, which I have done, uh, that seems counterintuitive because I can tell you, I know going up there jumping from, in my case, 12,500 feet up, that's a pretty frightening experience. And I'm thinking, hey, there's no way that this guy had you know, never jumped before. That seems particularly ballsy to do this type of thing. But here are some very interesting and intriguing facts that I think are worth bearing in mind. Uh, in the wake of D.B. Cooper skyjacking, there were five D.B. Cooper copycats who in effect did the same exact thing and jumped mid-flight from commercial airliner with ransom in hand. Some important things to consider with respect to these five people who jumped. First of all, all five got caught. Of course, unlike D.B. Cooper, who has never been caught. That's the first thing to note. Also, all five survived. Nobody died. All five survived. Very interestingly, three of the five had never jumped before. That was literally their first skydiving slash parachuting experience. They had never jumped before, which right there appeals, appears rather to dispel the notion that D.B. Cooper had to have jumped before. But no, apparently all you needed was some stones. That's it at the end of the day. A couple other things that are interesting to note. The two copycats that actually had skydiving experience both brought their own parachutes on board. The other three that did not have parachuting experience did not bring their own parachutes on board. They actually procured them from the authorities, just like D.B. Cooper. So make of it what you will. And one other final note, the two skyjackers, copycat uh, skyjackers that had experience, actually provided flight path instructions to the pilots. On the other hand, the three that didn't have experience did not provide any kind of flight path instructions to the pilots, again, just like D.B. Cooper. Make of it what you will. All right, folks, that's all I've got for you today. Of course, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out to me at eric at ericulis.com. And until next time, as usual, cheers.